Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I am going to show you the most overpowered Starline Sword build that will allow you to completely obliterate every single enemy of the new Shadow of the Earth 3 DLC. It is important to mention that in this video, I am not going to show you any major spoilers, so you can be safe that I will not show you anything important that could affect your experience. But of course, I will test the katana in some regular enemies in some early areas to show you the potential of the weapon in this DLC. And to get a reference about how powerful this katana can be, in this DLC, I will test it against the toughest enemies of the base game. But I can guarantee you that this is one of the best katanas I have ever tried, it's so fast, it's really powerful, and it will blow your mind with the insane Ash of War that it has. Bam! Bam! And look at this! Boom, Romy! <laughs> First of all, I'm going to talk about the main features of the weapon, I will show you the build, we will test it against the toughest enemies of the base game, and of course, I will show you how to get it in the Shadow of the Earth 3 DLC without any spoiler. So without anything further to say, let's begin with the video. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring in today's video. If you're an experienced katana player, you are going to love this weapon, because it's basically a regular katana, but with a lot of more base damage splitted on magic and physical damage. The physical part of the weapon is mostly slash damage, so it's not going to be that effective against enemies with heavy armor sets, but it is going to be extremely effective in bosses like Morgoth that doesn't have any heavy armor set on him, and of course it is going to be perfect for wild beasts and any kind of enemy that doesn't wear any powerful armor set. But if you're an experienced katana player, you will know that that doesn't matter too much when you craft a proper build with a katana. So with the build that I am going to show you today, you are going to destroy everything in your path, everything on the Shadow of the Earth DLC. I have progressed a little bit on the DLC and I can tell you that this weapon is one of the most amazing weapons you can find in this expansion. And of course, if it is that powerful in this DLC expansion that is quite hard, it is going to be perfect for an entire playthrough. And my favorite part of this weapon is definitely its amazing unique skill, which is called Onset's Line of Stars. The unique skill of this weapon is based on trimming inputs, the first one for two initial slashes, the second one for a heavy maneuver, and the third one for a fantastic finisher. As you can see, this skill is one of the most amazing skills I have ever seen on this game. It feels like the Karian Combo Warriors, bro, it's absolutely amazing. Now let's see how it performs against this crazy guy and its dog. So take this, buddy, take this and say goodbye. Bruh. This is absolutely insane guys, the enemies will get destroyed as fast as this guy dude, and that's because of the composition of our build. Now that we know the main features of this weapon, let's get straight into the details of the build. We are going to be using the Starline Sword on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. As you can see the base damage of this weapon is split between physical and magic damage almost in the same portion, but we are going to be dealing a lot of physical damage because of the dexterity scaling of the weapon. If we decide to split the stats between dexterity and intelligence in a more balanced way, we are going to be losing performance because the DS scaling of this weapon will not grant a lot of power compared to the B dexterity scaling of the weapon. So my personal recommendation is to build this katana as a dexterity weapon, and only level up strength and intelligence enough to be able to use the weapon. And as an extra feature for this build, we have a passive bleed build up. It is not that great, but it is not that bad, it is going to happen soon or later as long as your enemy is not immune to bleed. You can use any armor set you want, I actually recommend you to use any other one because I am using this one just for the drip and I feel safe to use it because the katana is actually very powerful. But in case you want to know what I am using, I am wearing the commoner's headband on its altered version, the Great Bird armor set which is a new piece from the DLC, the summer bracelets and the old sorcerer's leg wraps. The best talismans we can use for this build are the ritual sword talisman, the shard of Alexander, the rodent windsor insignia and the dragon crest gray shield talisman. If you want to increase the performance of the weapon at the cost of taking more damage, you can use the magic scorpion charm. It is a great option but you will take a little bit of more damage. Another decent alternative is the Lord of Blood's Exultation, but it is not going to be as effective as in a bleed build. Anyways, my main recommendation is that you keep the talisman combo that I initially mentioned. In our Flask of Wondrous Fizzy, we are going to use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. We are going to use the Thorny Crack Tear to stack it with the Rodding Winds or Insignia. This way, we will gain a lot of damage when dealing multiple successive attacks on any target. And the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear will increase our magic damage by 20%, which is a lot in a weapon that has a magic base damage that high. And don't forget your Pickle Torten Legs, because as we are going to keep a 
attacking continuously, you will need your stamina to regenerate faster. And now in order to get the best performance from this weapon, we are going to be using 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, Endurance on 40 to be able to attack as much as possible, Strength on 25, Dexterity on 80 to gain the best benefit from the scale values of the weapon, and 25 on Intelligence to be able to use the weapon and to find a balance between Strength and Intelligence, and we need only 25 points on Fate. This is because we are not going to use Hall of Shabriri this time. Hall of Shabriri will increase our damage taken by 30% and playing the DLC with that low defense is not really optimal. So the main buffs we are going to use are Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength. Obviously with this body buff we are not going to gain anything for our magic part of the weapon but we will get a 20% damage boost for the physical part of the weapon and that is going to be very useful to use this weapon in any situation. And of course I have my Scattered Tree Blessing on the level 3. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we rock the Starline Sword? So in order to buff your character you have to use Golden Bow first, then your Pickle Torten Leg which is optional but I strongly recommend you to use it, your Physic Flask, Flame, flame Grand Me Strength, to hand your weapon, refill your FP and you're ready to go. Let's go baby. Let's show Malenia who's boss. Hey Malenia. Take this one as well. Take this. Take this. Oh, <laughs> did you see that, guys? <laughs> this is what we can do with this weapon. It's amazing. Look at that damage, guys. We almost destroyed Malenia in two. Oh, <laughs> okay, I know this one, guys. So it's this, 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 this. And we dodge again. Easy take this. This thing is so broken, guys, but I, I had a really bad start in the second phase, dude. It doesn't matter. Look, there, there is the damage, dude. Oh, no way! No way! Did you see that? Let me show you my fantastic... That is what I am talking about! Did you see that, guys? <laughs> I took a few hits, but it is impressive, guys. It is an incredible weapon, bro. Oh, my God. Come on. Let's go, let's get it. Boom. Hey guys, this is it. This is it. Oh say goodbye. Boom! <laughs> no way this weapon is crazy guys! Okay guys, this is a very very early area of the DLC and I want you to see how effective this weapon is against these uh, regular mobs. So I won't spoil you or anything, but you will see how powerful this thing is. It just melts the enemy. So imagine what it can do to a power, a more powerful enemy. So okay, let's let's pick this this guy up here, and I will show you how how this weapon destroys him. We didn't even finish the skill. We're doing 3k damage on some enemies just by using the half of the skill, bro. And there there we go. Look at this destruction, guys. This is insane, man. <laughs> well guys, now I will show you where you can obtain the Starline Sword. I will not show you anything at all, enemies, nothing of the area. You just have to start this road from the Cerulean Coast side of Grace. So basically what you have to do is stick to the right all the way up until you get to this point. It is very obvious when you get here. And now you should go all the way to the left until you reach this point. Here you will have to fight something. And that something will drop you the Starline Sword. With that being said, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the Starline Sword as I did. Have a great day, guys. My name is Carlos, and I will see you in the next one.